Hello, in this video we'll be looking at uh, botnet and zero day vulnerabilities. Uh, those two are quite separate, but um, in terms of timing, it fits into one video. So let's have a look. Uh, botnets, um, you probably heard about bots, botnets, and so forth. So in this video, we'll you know go over the details of exactly how they work. A bot is an application that runs automate uh, runs automated tasks over the internet. So when we talk about a bot, it's just a single uh, system that does automated tasks, okay? Like a web crawler. A botnet is a collection of connected devices that runs one or more bots, okay? So that means it's a short for bot network, okay? So you have a bunch of bots connected and it's going to do those things, okay? So botnet can deploy uh, various types of attacks, uh, but most... Uh, Common one is the denial of service attacks, uh, distributed denial of service attack, uh, and spamming. Okay, but also steal data and accessing uh, bots as well. For example, uh, those bots can be used to collect data of the key loggers or uh, rootkits, um, trojans, spread viruses, and whatnot. Okay, so there is a nice uh, botnet uh, picture from that page there. But basically, a bonnet operator infects users first, okay? Um, so you can see there's a Trojan that gets used to infect people. And as mentioned in the previous video, Trojan uh, is not going to interact with people. It's not going to try to spread or anything. It's just going to sit there until it's told what to do, okay? The bot on the infected PC communicate back to the command and control server. So there is a command host. Uh, and then make sure that the bot, uh, bots are ready to roll if it needs to, right? A spammer purchases the service of the botnets from the operator. So operator will sell it as a service um, uh, uh, through some gains. It can be like a monetary gains, um, asking something to do. Then um, the spammer provides the spam messages to the operator. Uh, the botnet operator uses the bots to send out uh, the spam messages. Okay, so this is a spam example, but as you can see, this doesn't have to be a spam. It can be a denial of service packets, for instance, like a service request to take down the server. Okay, so these are the typical steps taken in uh, botnets. However, we will cover more about network attacks um, in later video. Okay, so stay tuned. Zero day. Okay, so. Some of you may not be familiar with the, this term zero day, but basically it means we don't we have zero days to react. Hence, uh, people are starting to use the term zero day. A zero day attack takes advantage of software vulnerability for which there are no available fixes. Okay, uh, so this means uh, you may not know there's a vulnerability, and hence you don't know any fixes. But also includes you know about the vulnerability, but you haven't come up with the fix yet. Okay, then uh, both of those will fall into the zero-day vulnerability category. The attacks take advantage of flaws before software makers can fix them, which means um, you can attack it anytime you want and uh, there is no defense against your attack. Okay, this has become a significant issue from 2008 onwards. Uh, the emphasis is importance of safe configuration policies and good incident reporting systems and People are now talking about um, attack resistant, uh, resilience, uh, and a bunch of other keywords. But zero day is a very interesting area of research as well, because how do you deal with unknowns, right? So let's have a look a bit more details about what those zero days can do. So attackers are getting faster at discovering and exploiting flows, which means they find something, then they quickly make attack, they can exploit that, okay? and uh, Blaster Worm back in 2003 was a very good example, uh, released in August 2003, but the patch got released in January 2004. So for that amount of time, like five months or so, uh, nobody had any patch or defense mechanism against that, which means everybody just gets Blaster Worm if you are still connected and have that vulnerability. Okay. Uh, what it did was use buffer flow and then also launch the distributed denial of service uh, against windowsupdate.com, which means it tried to delay the updates as much as possible. But even then, for five months, it, there was no patch anyway. OK, 
Okay. <laughs> but the funny thing is, uh, it wasn't very successful as it was redire redirected to Windows update.microsoft.com. So uh, didn't really work either. Um, so here's the like a timeline. Um, here at TV is vulnerability introduction time, and at some time later, the exploit released in the wild. So somebody found a vulnerability and somebody found some exploit. And eventually the vendor will discover that vulnerability as well. So ideally you want that uh, time TD to be before TV, but in many cases, uh, this is the scenario that we have to deal with, okay? And eventually, uh, this vulnerability will be disclosed publicly. Uh, this can be quite dangerous depending on what system you're using. Um, for example, the Intel chips, they are vulnerable to side channel attacks. And what the researchers do, did was disclose that to Microsoft first, and then they fixed it, and then they released it out. Okay. Uh, however, they still found uh, new vulnerabilities with new Intel chips, and to the best of their knowledge uh, from their research papers, there is no fix so far. Okay, um, but after that, the antivirus signatures can be released, which means now we have some sort of a um, patch coming soon. Uh, you can detect the attacks first, and then we can produce the patch, which means we get rid of the vulnerability uh, fully. And finally, the patch deployment completed can come much later on. And even on some uh, systems, it might not fully uh, patch everything because some people do not update anything at all as well. Okay, so what does the trend look like? Okay, so this was the semantic report back in 2015, and not many people provide these reports, but basically, the number of zero day vulnerabilities uh, fluctuates. Um, I think the last few years it also you know stayed around in that area, um, but they're still lingering around, which means um, you know a lot of systems will be impacted, especially once they find that a lot of people use uh, like some operating systems, for instance. Uh, according to the zero day initiatives, uh, 135 vulnerabilities were discovered in Adobe products during the first 11 months of 2016 and 76 in Microsoft products. So that's actually quite a lot of numbers of zero-day vulnerabilities uh, they find. Uh, meanwhile, the number of zero-day flaws in Apple products doubled over the previous year uh, to 50 from 25. So as mentioned in a couple of videos back, as you have more users, the people will take more interest in it and more vulnerabilities will be found. So just because those numbers are low does not not necessarily mean that it's more secure. Okay, you need to do a thorough uh, security evaluation to differentiate which system uh, is actually strong or resistant against specific attacks. Okay, so how do you go about detecting zero days? Obviously, protecting against zero days is much more difficult, and you will have to start with detection first. So we have um, four based te uh, four techniques um, to detect zero day attacks. So first one is statistical base. So this approach to detecting zero-day exploits in real time relies on attack profiles built from historical data. So we build profiles of um, past attacks, and then we can check whether there will be another, another attack here or not. So if you saw some trend in um, Adobe being exploited by zero-day, say two every six months, then we can estimate that uh, another two attack will happen in the next six months. So that's the statistical base. And obviously you can see that this can be a very flawed approach, but um, this can provide some insight uh, based on trends. Okay. The next one is signature based. This detection approach is dependent on signatures made from known exploits. So um, uh, mentioned in the malware video, malware video, about um, similarity checks. Um, there's a techniques to do similarity checks. And if we check the similarities between this new signature compared to some of the old ones, we can see, oh, this has a high match percentage, for, his, uh, for instance, okay? And we can set a threshold value and say whether this might be an attack or not, okay? So that's a signature-based attack. 
However, because now we have so such a large um, vulnerable uh, uh, exploit um, signatures, uh, this can be very slow. Behavior based is quite different. Uh, this one um, based on the analysis of exploits interaction with the target. So for instance, whenever uh, malware runs on a system, it has to do some activities, right? Uh, for instance, we, you can trace the system calls of what kind of um, APIs they call. Uh, and we try to match that to some malicious behavior um, we already identified. Okay, Or we define a normal activities and see monitor uh, what those applications do. And if it's flagged, then we can say that, oh, this behavior is looking malicious. We can detect that. Okay, So behavior, signature, statistical, all quite different approaches. And then there is a hybrid based. Uh, as the name suggests, this approach is blending uh, uh, of different approaches. There are pros and cons to this. Obviously, the pros is you look at a lot of different aspects of the malware. However, the cons are that you have to implement all of those techniques, which can be quite costly and time consuming to do so. Okay. And that pretty much summarizes all the malware we wanted to go over in this week's series of videos. And basically, you want to keep up to date with what's going on. So there's a bunch of websites you can uh, visit here, okay, uh, and see what's happening out there. Um, because awareness is very important uh, in terms of protecting your system against attacks, okay. There's also Computer Emergency Response Team, short for CERT. Um, we have one in Australia, and there's a bunch of uh, other countries that have their own, okay? And they provide specific reports for those countries. Uh, so it is good to understand those guys as well. All right, otherwise, I'll finish here and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.